Hey guys, so I hope you're good. This is what I've been playing around with recently now. You remember my old videos from back in the day, before I got a car, before I started getting into car audio, it was all about home cinema audio and bass with the PCs and music and stuff in the bedroom and powering car audio amplifiers off of computer power supplies. I've got a big old junky stack of old computer power supplies under my wardrobe there, <laughs> basically. Um, Jerry, good old man, McJerry69, sent me a bunch of power supplies to use when I was running my old Fusion amplifier off the 4.8s, which are now in my mids, because they are actually mid speakers, even though they work awesome as subs. Um, and I ran them all in parallel. I didn't really know what I was doing as much as I do now, and they kind of powered each other, and they were all different um, current uh, ratings, etc. So they did kind of... Tr to try to power each other a little bit. Um, now what I've got here, this is all thanks to my man Jay Holly. This guy, what a legend. This is a Dell server power supply. Now these obviously cannot be used in mainstream PCs um, for the simple fact that they're designed for servers and they only have a 3.3 volt output and a 12 volt output. The 12 volt output is immense. This little Thing right here is uh, rated for 930 watts and most of that almost all of that is coming up the 12 volt rails and it is sturdy and strong and built like a tank I think it's something like 75 amps on the 12 volt rail 75 is a hell of a lot when you're talking about computer power supplies it's not a lot when you're talking about big car audio um, you know car, car batteries etc able to deliver 300 amps plus some amplifiers drawing a lot more than that etc but for a computer power supply that is very very powerful now I've had to modify some of the pin configuration down here so what we've got is if I turn the um, brightness up a little bit on the camera what we've got down here is we've got some pins we've got the rails here so we've got the I think it's the ground and the plus or the other way around and then here on the other side is all the pins which basically trick the PSU into thinking it's in a server rack and you've got the power on you've got a, another pin to slow the fans down you've got another one which boosts the uh, voltage up to 12.6 uh, the stock voltage coming out the rails is 12.07 so it's really down low at 12 now the reason this boosts it up to 12.6 is another superb factor um, feature of this power supply. You can buy as many of these power supplies as you like and run them all in parallel and it's got a current share pin down here. So what you can do is it's basically like strapping, strapping amplifiers. You can buy as many of these as you want, one, two, three, four, run all of the output rails in parallel and then run all of the current share pa uh, pins parallel to each other so that the power supplies know that they're being run in parallel with other power PSUs. It boosts the voltage a little bit and it also stops any negative um, rail voltage coming back through the rails and a bunch of other stuff. Um, now what I've done is I've tricked this power supply into thinking that it's working with others purely to boost the voltage up a little bit. So it doesn't make any difference to its output other than it boosts the voltage up a bit which is one of the things it does when it's running with others. So that gives me a nice, health, nice healthy 12.62 volts there. Now this amplifier, which I'm going to test it out with, is an SPL Dynamics EXT 2000D. This is very rare now. Um, I have been looking for a second one for absolute ages. That's why I know it's rare. Um, I wanted to run one of these per RE triple X 15 in my car. So I've got two amps, one on each sub, and that would be 2000 watts RMS plus um, on each sub which would be fantastic but I haven't managed to find another one yet so this has been sitting in my room for a while just gathering dust so I thought I'd use this to test out the power supply now obviously 75 amps on 12 volts this is more like 250 300 amps on 14.4 volts to get that rated power however I'm only going to be using a entry level digital designs 1000 series sub now this is somewhere around the 500 600 RMS mark um, I'm just going to see whether this amp on this PSU can max out the sub without too much voltage drop. So let's hit a tune. I'm going to play Taking Chances on the decaf, my favourite one. I play it quite a lot, <laughs> which is probably quite annoying, but I do like it. Now, if anyone's interested in this, I will go through the pin configuration, but just watch this. Okay, so moving nicely. Now look at the voltage. There's barely any drop there. Bearing in mind this sub is being maxed out.
Now, I don't know about you, but that's very, very impressive. Big, heavy, juicy amplifier is going to draw a lot of current. Uh, this power supply is doing incredibly well, only dropping uh, 0. Uh, what is it? Yeah, 0. 0.3 volts on maxing out this uh, subwoofer right here. So I have no problem in guessing that this amplifier running on my Pioneer uh, 212S down there, which is about 600 watts RMS, um, 1200 peak, that is going to sound absolutely beautiful in that big box off of this amplifier with that power supply. And obviously this amplifier is not, de not designed for my room, it's too powerful for that sub really. But what this means is, is that I can use this power supply or maybe two running in parallel to power a smaller car amplifier, maybe something around the 1000 watts RMS mark. Um, basically 1000 watts RMS I'm going for because that's rated at 14.4, I'm running 12.6 and also a little bit of voltage drop, etc. Therefore, I'm gonna take it into account and go for 1,000 and maybe hope to get 600 out of it. And that means that I can use my Technics. So the Technics is currently what's powering the Pioneer. Um, it does a very good job of it, bearing in mind it's only 150 watts times two per channel. Um, but that means that I can use the Technics to run my front floor standards. The front floor standards are currently on the Yamaha, and the Yamaha is very capable of powering them. But the Technics is just an older amplifier, it's got a warmer sound, it's a nicer kind of sound, and it really suits the old drivers in these floor standards better than the Yamaha. The Yamaha seems a little bit too bright and doesn't really t seem to give enough current to the speakers. It's not, it's not sort of getting them moving enough. It's not that nice warm sound that I like. It's a bit too kind of bright and tinny, which is fine for the center speaker and the rear surround speakers, but I want to get some warmth and some proper power behind these floor standards. So the Technics will be on the floor standards, and then a car amplifier on a very powerful power supply down there will be powering my pioneer down the bottom. So stay tuned for some updates and some cool stuff from my room for once.